All right. Welcome into the half, everybody. My name is Aaron Montgomery, and you can find me at our successgroup.com. This amazing gentleman right here is Eric Campbell, who you can find over at ericcampbell.com. Sir, how are you today? Doing all right. Doing all right. As usual, very busy. I think many of us are, though. I don't want to join the cult of busy since I think that's uh, it's not always the best thing to be super busy. But hey, that's where we are. <laughs> that's what I was say. As that's a society, I think we wear the I'm busy as a badge of honor. Yeah. And, and I'm uh... not going to say that. In fact, what I'll say is, uh, in, in my opinion, I need to be managing things better so that it's not always the case. I think that's not always good. But at the same time, definitely, definitely a busy week. And I know you're having a busy week, too. So uh yeah all of us are on the train we're on the, well but it's, we're on the struggle bus but hey at least we're still right. kicking along yeah it's better <laughs> it's the better alternative than the alternative i guess is what I should that's say. what i always say yeah that when, when everybody asks me and i know this is not like the nicest way of putting things but hey this is how i usually put things somebody asks me how i'm doing and when i'm having a rough day i'm like well i'm on the right side of the dirt today like that's right. there you go. that's that's about where i'm at like i can say that for myself today every time i wake <laughs> up there's another chance to try again <laughs> so yeah hey i woke up that's, that is a good, it's a good chance to try again today. So good, definitely good, happy good, to do good. it. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, let's check in. And then uh, as we're checking in and, and saying hello, everybody, just want to give those that maybe new or, or um, yes, you know, maybe long time listeners, but uh, you know, first time callers, so to speak. Um, <laughs> first time live attendees, live attendees. Um, so just want to throw this out there. Here's the whole deal here. We get to chat with you guys. Um, you know, if it's going to be saying hello and interacting back and forth, that's fine. But if we want to get into some topics, we want to, you've got questions, you've got certain things that you're working on, what's in your brain right now. So this is really an opportunity for Eric and I to get to interact with you guys. So yep. with that being said, let's start with that, Eric. Let's uh, say hello to some yeah, Let's say hello to some people. Yeah. Yeah. Chuck, good afternoon. Thanks for being here. Chuck. And uh, Bevy Jean, good morning to you. Good Depending morning. where you're at, good morning, good afternoon, whatever. <laughs> hey, happy to have you in no matter what time it is. Also, hashtag Replay Squad. If you're watching this on the replay, listening to this as you do something else, we are happy to have you in too. Please still feel free to comment if you want to. Yep. Put put in that hashtag Replay Squad in there and yeah, do uh, it. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Good morning and good morning from Ramona. Thank you, Ramona. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Good morning to you. And uh, Barb, good day, everyone. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Barb. And Mike is in. Hey, fellas, says Mike. And hey to you too, sir. Yeah, excellent. Excellent. Crystal, thanks for uh, being here. M happy to make two live shows today. And yeah. thank, thank you very much for the five things over there on Two Regular Guys. Yeah, she shared some of her insights at the end of Five Regular That's Guys. Right here. Or for Two Regular Guys. The, her five things and the insights. She's going to get for that a pair of sublimated socks with Two Regular Guys on it. <laughs> if you guys missed out on the Two Regular Guys show today... Uh, we had William Boardman on talking about kind of the three essential truths about uh, people and what we need and what we want and talked a yep. lot about purpose and how to deal with employees and customers and what it just means to uh, kind of meet people with their real needs. So it was kind yep. of interesting stuff today and we might get into that a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Um, Ramona, 244 WTP shirt order as increased to include five more shirts, 12 aprons and embroidered hats, plus my digitizing testing work. Woo. -woo. Yes. Yeah, do it. Keep that yeah. needle moving up and down. That is how the money works. Come on, <laughs> folks. Do it. So that's, that's awesome. Yeah. When the needle goes up and down, that's when you're making money. Exactly. If you're, if you're doing heat press stuff, whenever that yep. heat press pops open, that's when you're making money. That's cash. If that's the cash register. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> if you're a screen printer, when that shirt falls off the end of the dryer, that's when you're that's making money. money. Right. So yeah. That's, that's what I always tell somebody whenever somebody jumps on, and especially we always talk about the replay squad. Some will jump onto the live show and go, I'm sorry. I can't, I can't be here. I had to go meet a customer. I'm like, why are you stopping to tell me? Go, <laughs> go do your job. Stack that's it. Right paper do what you have to do i mean also <laughs> it's like there's something other creative thing that you're working on too even if it's not just straight making money go do that creative thing and come back to me i'll be here yeah that's right. that is <laughs> we the will cool be part. here for you yeah that is the cool part about all this uh the replay <laughs> is always at the same place that the live was so you it's know, always here folks hit the, hit the replay it's going to be there go all right things. bill hello thanks hello, for being bill. here and we've got mr jeff fuller joining us hello Thank sir being in jeff Yep. Oh, Nancy. Nancy of Madeira. Thank you for showing up. Yeah, appreciate and coming in on LinkedIn. So Nancy does awesome lives for Madeira USA. So you should be checking that stuff out. Check out all that stuff about materials and how they work. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Good morning to Clara. Am I saying that yes. right, Eric? 
Who knows? I, that's how I would say it, but I okay. could be wrong. <laughs> All right. Correct us if we're wrong. Uh, if I'm wrong, excuse me. And uh, but good morning. Thanks for being here. And uh, good morning to Justin. Yes, and... digitizing. I'm sure Justin yep. Armenta is in. Yep. Yep. And, and Yosta. Yosta from Uppsala, Uppsala, Sweden. Yeah. Uppsala. There we go. All right. Good, good. Good. And um, yeah. That's what Justin says. Or I just grab my AirPods and listen while I work. Believe me, this is how I got started in all of this stuff is listening to the trailer guys while I worked. <laughs> Turns out I can't do that now. Unfortunately, when you're producing, you actually have to be there. <laughs> so yeah, can't digitize while I work nearly as much as I used to. Not that I don't occasionally do it while we're producing. I'm not going to say it's never happened. Um, that would be well, a we lie. We can see it now. Fair, Before, yeah. we could just make up stories about what was actually going on in the background when it was phone-in time. <laughs> now the boys know if they catch me not paying enough attention that I'm working he's on. He's digitizing. Something. Terry, he's digitizing again. No. Um, <laughs> I'm discreet. You can't tell. Yeah, that's right. Uh, he's got the two rare guys book with the digitizing book inside of it right is that kind of the <laughs> i've got two plus sometimes screens for a reason people been, if i'm looking to one side too much then you can call me out on it like, yeah what, yep. what is this guy doing over here right now? <laughs> yeah don't ask. don't ask all right we've got uh, craig tuning in from boston and it's nice. lunchtime there what's what's for lunch craig uh, <laughs> yeah, are we going to get into the food comments again? Yeah, get to get some food stuff going. Always. I mean, I lived in Boston for a little while, and the stereotype is that everybody just always eats chowder, clam chowder yeah. there. So I don't yeah. know. I, that's, that, was that, that true at all? No, Did no you it wasn't know? true. At all. I just, what I didn't. Think. But I, but I know that like many people had fond memories of like sitting in um, Fenway with the you know cup of soup in their lap and oh so ramen noodles. Here we go. Okay, ramen. Hey, man, nothing wrong with that. No, yeah, no shame in the ramen, ramen game. Noodle. God, I need to get, get some of those. We haven't had that in a little bit. That's a good call. Sounds good, right? Now I'm hungry. Um, <laughs> Rich, hello. And uh, to ship says, enjoy listening while I work digitizing away. Good job. Yeah, digitizers are big audiobook and podcast people because, I, and I'll, I'll say this, for me, it doesn't engage the same part of my brain. Uh, I can often multitask that kind of stuff. I can listen to an audiobook and retain a lot of it while digitizing because it's two pretty separate parts of the brain that seem to be engaged. But I've had the, I've, I've been the idiot who tries to write while listening to an audiobook. That is impossible. Don't do that. <laughs> Neither yeah. of the things will be done well. <laughs> yep. And but then yeah, we've got sure. uh, Mr. Facebook user. Um, Todd, I'm and then sure. when we, <laughs> when Todd talks about Facebook users on his lives, he always says F you, which stands for Facebook user. So sure it does. I have to always sure remind does. him that it stands for Facebook user. So yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, yo, anyway. I yeah. Mean, yo, anyways. Yo. Chris, <laughs> hello. Uh, Craig says Sully is open. Um, so that's a Boston thing. <laughs> okay. I don't know that. <laughs> I was like, I, and also, I realized like we're talking about, you know, a, food stereotypes and i can't say anything because the food stereotype are like oh chowder food stereotype and i'm like yeah except for if you say oh you're in you're in albuquerque you eating chili all day and i'm like yeah totally <laughs> <laughs> absolutely i'm putting chili on everything no lie yeah we do put green chili in literally everything <laughs> nice. so yeah no i yes the stereotype is there yeah uh, Mike says, uh, I can't digitize and listen to something I care about at the same time. I've reheard some of my favorite movie a th movies a thousand times, though. So there you go. I'll say this. You get into concentrating on a detailed area or something or something difficult, and then you realize that you've had an entire chapter of an audiobook go by and you didn't retain any of it. That does happen. No why. that Because yeah. I've actually very recently I've been listening to an audiobook while I've been working on some assets over in Brilliance here, working on fonts and things that have to be fairly precise because they're going to be scaled up and down constantly. There's some chapters where I go back and I'm like, how did that end up here? Where did we lose the, the trail from where I was? Yeah, the, there's a good reason there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you have to focus, but I will yeah. say more than anything else, like I've been able to listen and digitize more at least than just about any other part of the work I've done. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's so, man, that's that's an interesting conversation. Let, let's say yeah, hello right. to uh, K for a creations here real quick. Yep, hello, Marta, Thanks. she is in. Marta, thank you for being here. Yep. Um, so Eric, yeah, I want to talk about that real quick then. Um, All right. You know, we're talking about listening to different things. So sure. I don't, you know, some people, you know, there was a discussion over on our volley channel about what sure. things people are listening to as far as what's music's on their playlist. Yeah. I don't, That that's so interesting to me because I don't um, listen to music very much while I'm working. And, and the reason for me um, is I don't, um, I get so 
kind of going and, and a lot of things that are going on around me, there's like, Oh, I need to watch this video. I need to, you know, do this edit or something like that. And when, when that's going on for me, yeah. if I've got music going on in the background and then, you know, I've got to listen to a video, it just, I don't know. So I, I've never really been the listen to music person in the background. I I've been on and off and I'll have to admit right now I'm on an off kind of period in my life where I haven't been listening to a lot of music. I, I will do it sometimes, but yeah, not as much as I used to. When I used to be in an embroidery shop, of course, like embroidery and screen print shops, there's music always. Yeah. And honestly, the, the fight over who's got control of the major overhead stuff used to be a big deal. Back in the day, it was always like who got the speakers for the day and why. Yeah. Um, and now it's everybody's got headphones. Everyone's wearing, you know, whatever Bluetooth, AirPods, whatever the heck they have yeah. all the time now. Yeah. Um, but I, I, yeah, personally, I'm not as much as I used to be. And when I do, it's often like nah, instrumentals, like no instrumental music that is fairly forgettable that doesn't engage too much. Yeah. And that's the honest truth is I, cause I'm, I'm in the same boat with you. It's like, I've got a lot, a lot of thinking to do. And sometimes I really don't want the mood of whatever I'm listening to, yeah. to invade what I'm doing. Cause yeah. I, I, it may or may not really be the right kind of mood for what I'm working on. Yeah. Truthfully. And that, that's interesting too, because I was talking to my friend, Brian Davis, who um, yeah. I do a lot of Canfield stuff with. We're going to be doing a half day workshop at the end of May actually. And oh. um, you know, he's really spent a lot of time kind of pl plugging in, figuring things out, understanding how our bodies react, you know, the vibrations, all that kind of stuff. And, and I love talking to him. And some people are like, Oh, that's a little too wooey. But the more I get into this, the more I realize how true all this stuff is. And he was talking about the fact that he had to stop kind of listening to music because if you're, you're not careful, you don't pay attention to the language of some of the music, you know, just the, the down negativity, all that other stuff that, you know, you could, you know, and so that's interesting. I, I've, I've changed up what I listen to a little bit to, to be more, um, more instrumental and less lyrics and less I know what the lyrics are. And, and I have seen a difference in my, um, my mood. So I don't know, maybe I'm, I, maybe it's a, uh, one of those, what's, what do they call that? Where you take the salt pill instead the, uh, Oh no. Yeah. The, yeah, the, for sure. It, it can be kind of a, <laughs> an because, effect that because I'm believing sure. that it's true. It's going to be true kind of thing, but anyway, it could be a placebo but, effect. Yeah. No, placebo, sure. thank placebo you. Effect. Yeah. but yeah, I think for me, it's like, uh, I, I don't get me wrong. I will, use this to my advantage there are times where i'm like no this is it it is time for hardcore you know fast music it's time for yeah. for me to rock out it's time for some punk music it's cool my thing is most of the time uh the algorithm for me does not work out my shuffle's a little too weird uh my <laughs> own personal collection is too weird too to yeah. the point where even i can't listen to my own damn shuffle because it's just too much <laughs> stuff from from too many different genres uh and that's hard because like yeah. I, literally everything from classic rock to punk to heart to yeah. rap to you know to folk music yep. world music everything across the board is in that collection and it's yeah. too out there yeah. i almost can't do it um yeah. but yeah it's that that, that kind of gets me that and honestly there are times where i'm like man i feel really tired and whacked out and i'm like oh because i've been listening to a really hardcore playlist for like three hours while i'm working i lost track of time but i'm like man driving rhythms for like three, four solid hours. I'm like, man, I'm kind of like, I feel tired. I feel worn yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Ramona right. says when I digitize in front of the television, I always try to put on a movie that I've seen before. I don't <laughs> feel I've missed anything when I look up. Um, <laughs> my, my wife and I do that sometimes. And for us, that is uh star Trek. That is star Trek series. I don't want to say oh, that nice. out loud, but that is it. Like, yep, that's old, right. like star Trek series. We, we have gone through them multiple times because we work while they're on. That's there you absolutely go. the truth. I <laughs> love um, it. And then Mr. Go. FU here says volley is so fetch. And I did have to look that up. What <sighs> fetch meant. So, um, yeah, when when the hot slang is old old slang, <laughs> it's, also, <laughs> it's not making anything sound cooler. <laughs> yeah, Mike says uh, I have to be careful with music. <laughs> Lost a lot of time to air guitar. I thought that was funny. Uh, I yeah. demand video. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, saying I demand video. Like, yeah. But hey, it's not true unless you video it. Is that how that yes, goes? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> vids or didn't happen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, all right. When I do listen to music, I tune into seventies and eighties rock. That's a good, totally, good stuff. Totally. See, I, you were just talking about how you're all over the place. And I always felt like I was all over the place and still, till I started hearing about you. Right. You know, yeah. cause I'll go like nineties, hardcore hip hop to uh, country yeah. music and, and sure, all sure. things in between, but you go even further than that. I love it. <laughs> oh yeah. No, I mean, cause it's, it goes out to world music and folk music and medieval and Renaissance stuff. It, like it's, it's all over the board to the point where, like I said, very few people can stand 
my collection on shuffle, including me. Yeah. Um, I, I got to be in a mood for it. And then also <laughs> if I have to start curating my music, then I'm, I'm out. Like it's too much effort for me to do while I'm working. Yeah. So yeah, sometimes, and I'll say this too, here's another weird tip for anybody who's weird like me. Um, go to YouTube and look up uh, epic video game music. The music that's made for like open world video games, even if you're not a video game person, it's made for the loop to be in the background and inspirational, but not to come all the way to the foreground. Hmm. And because the, those loops are made to be where you can sit for hours and do a thing while it's playing, but it is it has some mood to it, yeah. that music does that job of being just in the border of your consciousness really well. And so I people like have that. made lots of collections of video game music because now that people have you know hours of roaming around an open world to do, um, then that's a, it's a good place to be. So yeah, check that out. Uh, Epic video game music is, a, is one of the ones cool. I've used for that too. Or hey, the classic lo-fi hip hop station, we all know Girl in the Headphones. Um, if you're on YouTube, I'm also, yeah, lo-fi, hip hop, chip tunes, stuff like that where Love it's it. interesting, instrumental, but doesn't rise all the way to the top of my consciousness and kind of you know crowd out something i'm thinking about yeah so i love it if i do music but I'm, there you I'm, go. I'm really more of a podcast guy i gotta yeah. say speaking of that so is justin yeah justin. <laughs> yeah podcast I, by the way i would love to hear what your podcasts are here's my my sad podcast thing i did recently because we were watching uh star treks while we we're working we were watching voyager a while back yeah and uh the delta flyers would be uh Tom Paris, the actor who played Tom Paris, the actor who played uh, Harry Kim, cast uh, those guys. Yeah. To listen to, or there's two other guys, but you know. yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, mean, I figure you already do. We want to know what your you podcast to to list guys. is. You can just go ahead and. We yeah. know two regular I'm guys quiet. is on it, so let's just not worry about that. Get that out of the way. I'm assuming you're cool. <laughs> I'm assuming you're cool. I, I got you know, one for you. Guys. Small Business Saturdays yeah, Podcast you go. com. You can also good. Podcast also you. good. Um, all right. Hey, so what is on your hey, list? There's there? the take up. We can put, we can promote take all that up. Stuff. Is that podcast? Uh, yeah, no. It's not actually, it's on YouTube. It's not podcast. I, we are so visual at the take up that I, that's the one thing I sometimes feel guilty about is people are like, I'm working while I listen and I feel bad because I'll be doing like design analysis. I'm like, I'm pointing at things on screen. You can't really podcast that. Yeah. So that's, that's a, the question I always get to like, Oh, can we do a podcast? And I'm like, I can. Technically, I don't know how much like today we're going to do some design analysis. The first half of the show is podcastable. The second half, I don't know, folks. We'll be talking <laughs> about, you know, talking about the customer interview. Yes, talking about, uh, you know, art and analysis of art and less. Still, there's some good stuff in there, but I, I know there are times where I'm like, look here at the stitches and how they interact between these two columns. Yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> <Podcast>. <laughs> Sorry, folks. <laughs> wow. All right. Podcasts there. Go Still to Jeff says, if I listen to music while I'm digitizing lyrics end up in the underlay. <laughs> Nobody just digitizes lyrics <laughs> by accident. I don't believe you. <laughs> All right. Mr. FU says uh, musical day to day. Beetlejuice is on. So there we go. Yep. yep. Um, all right. Mike says, oh, we don't have enough time to do original versus TNG. Uh, yes, we do. Next generation is superior. Uh, not taking questions. <laughs> <laughs> I just made a lot of enemies. Anyway, yeah, wow. sorry. Well, sorry, Trekkies. You want me to make some more enemies? Then uh, I had no uh, idea what okay. he was talking about. So yeah, see, yeah. <laughs> do you? Uh, this is the Kirk versus Picard question. Oh man. Mm -hmm. Oof. All right. No, Oof. I don't want to get yeah, into that. Nobody wants I, that. Hey, I want that heat. The, I don't know enough <laughs> not, about it to not nerdy enough. Bring right? a bring a good opinion. I, I don't know. I, it's not that I'm not nerdy enough because I'm definitely nerdy enough. So, and Mike is on your team there, Eric. So we're good. So we're... This man knows. Yep. <laughs> he knows. All right. Bill says nothing but mountain dulcimer music here. Uh, well, only sometimes really. So <laughs> I, I listened to less of it than I used to when I was playing it all the time. Yeah. But, yeah. but the fact that I actually can pronounce uh, dulcimer and, and know what it is, is Thanks very much to Eric. So thank you, sir. Yeah. And very few of you have heard me before, which I'm going to keep that probably that way. But hey, all right. <laughs> I don't play as much as I used to. It used to be a lot better well, back in the day. Someday, somehow, I will get you to play it and I'll videotape it. So. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to see. I, I've always said that before. He was like, why don't you do your, your theme song for the take up? I'm like, uh, yeah. I don't know. All right. Ramona, Star Trek. Original, old cast, and new cast. Yep, me too. Okay. Oh, yeah, all, all, all different series. I, I'm, I'm on all of them. Truthfully, gotcha. but yeah, still. Gotcha. All right, still. Um, Evelyn, thanks for being here. Nice. All right, Mike. Ongoing history of new music with Alan Cross. Addictive, huh? I don't. I'll have to check that one out. 
Yeah. Have you have you checked that one out, Eric? Already? No, I have not. But like I said, I'm I'm always taking a concepts here because I, yeah, I if like you're it. a digitizer, you make anything for uh, the the world, the art world for uh, decorators. You know that you just spend a lot of time drawing, and if you're doing that, then <laughs> there, there's plenty of time to be listening to podcasts. Yeah. Kristen is watching Picard on Paramount right now. Same, same. Just ah. did the run back through. That is the one evening show. We get one show where we dedicate some time to actually watch while we eat dinner, and that is currently it for us. So. Sweet. Cool. Mm. All right. So Crystal just had a brain fart and took all my cat frames off, turned around to see I still have my last two runs to do. All right. Oh, so Eric, sucks. help me out here though. As a as an embroidery newbie, or I would sure, sure. call myself a newbie. I'm not even sure I'm in that realm yet. <laughs> where, where does 15 minutes categorize me at? <laughs> I, I, I don't I'm know. Right behind newbie. the ears, yes. Yeah. Uh, brand new. <laughs> I know what embroidery is, right? Okay, so you haven't been in ship, you haven't finished what, one yet. <laughs> what What does that mean for your time? Okay, how, when, how, when how you much have time to are you talking about wasting there? Depends on the machine that you're on, and if you're on a big multi head, it's a real pain uh, because you may need help depending on how big your your frame your drivers are. When you're switching over to the cap drive or to the caps, it's not just like the frames, not just the hoops. It's uh, it is literally pulling off the drivers. They have to be connected on and usually bolted back into place. And like I said, it depends on the age of your machine, how easy this is. Also, there are now multi-head machines that have two sets of drivers that are easier for one human being to, man to manage. Um, okay. Back in the day on the ones that I was doing on a 12-head machine, it was pretty, the, the cap driver assembly was pretty long, pretty big, and it might take two people to comfortably get it on and off without scratching things up. But it does mean changing off a portion of the assembly it's not just like clipping in a hoop you have to take the driver out and that's a real pain but it looks like crystal is actually in some luck only six heads and no needle plates yeah i've got universal needle plates to put old the old cap machines too or the old machines used to have a different uh, needle plate uh between the caps and the flats if you've got universal plates and you have a six head you can do that with one person that's at least a little bit better yeah <laughs> worse by far if you've done this on a couple of 12s which i have done that Maybe. or if, for me though i'm going to say this it wasn't something that I forgot generally. It was that I had a production manager who said, all right, we're putting on this job. And then something goes, hold hold the phone. Wait, 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 wait. This person has to go first. They're on caps. And I'm like, I have just broken that machine down to the flats. <laughs> I'm very <laughs> unhappy right now that I'll be moving that pack over. Uh, all right. Well, Evelyn says, oh, my crystal. Welcome to Friday. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Jeff says, pretty good show. Yeah, um, right on. And then uh, 15 minutes. That's my experience. Prosumer, yeah. right? <laughs> no, 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 no. Prosumers, by the time you buy a prosumer machine, you're usually over 15 minutes. Though I have seen people go full on that first one. <laughs> All right. Yeah, uh, this is true. Let's see. Wait, wait. I missed one before. Mike says, on my ancient TME-HCs, it's mm -hmm. a full day work to switch out caps to tubular better to dedicate a machine to each 100 percent. if you can keep them split up i have, have run that very machine and yes dip switches in the back of the head unit depending yeah now yeah. I, I was very lucky the machine that i used the most of my time actually had a single head machine that i ran because it was sampling and small order stuff um later on in my life and i used to love it because it just had a switch it had a dedicated switch my old brother commercial had a dedicated flat to cap switch and it was just a couple of screws to get it on and off that's that's a great thing you got a single head that has a couple things that's no big deal but oh absolutely when you're talking about those old school machines <laughs> yeah the old tajimas yeah dip switches in the back of the head unit and uh really it takes a minute to get everything on you know bolted off and bolted back on yeah. it's not it's not fun wow. to switch them wow. much better and usually the the right idea to have them swapped out and have one in one yeah. but we all know there's times where you're running a load of flats or a load of hats and you need both machines on and it's just <laughs> nothing you can do yeah yep. <laughs> yep all right crystal says i'll break with it after lunch clearly time for a break and then uh, totally. yeah, i'll fix it after lunch clearly time yep. for a break so yeah let, let's uh, get, agree uh, get, get your break in. get your lunch in yeah, <laughs> get some get some nutrients. Evelyn loves single heads. Yeah, a lot of people run in fleets of singles. I can't I can't argue with that. That was something that back in the day was not really heard of. But with especially with the kind of order sizes and the way customization has been going these days, I never blame somebody who's got a fleet of single heads, even when they're running. You know, heck, even if they're running twelve of them, there it, there's definitely good reasons to have multi heads. Mm -hmm. But the fleet of singles is a valuable, valid way to run your business, depending on your. Uh, your yeah. mix of customers and your mix of yeah. orders yeah. big time. 
All right, Eric. Well, with about five minutes left here, we're not going to be able to get in, into anything <laughs> real major. But is there anything uh, else? If you you, you folks you tune in, you. let us know where, where you're at. Um, if there's anything else that's show, showing up, but uh, oh, there what we are. Talk about in five minutes, Eric. Oh, um, yeah. This, God, uh, our Facebook user says. <laughs> yeah, Facebook user F U says Facebook they're like no, print no, farms. Sorry. Yeah, kind of. The 3D print farms where it's a bunch of little 3D printers tooling away, aside from the fact that despite embroidery being slow, everybody who complains about embroidery being slow must not see 3D print people who sometimes have those things on their bed for two, two three days at a time. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. for sure. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah. I had some I would ask you, honestly, because I think, that, oh, well, we have some cool stuff here. Yeah. <laughs> we have people just talking about stuff. I thought, I thought honestly, that we had such a great day with uh, William earlier that I'd try and get you in on more inspirational stuff we may not even have time for that no, i think we're probably probably not don't have time for that but let's yeah i think we've got some good stuff here evelyn right. great to see you um todd says let us know what to expect from both of your classes at dax and then lisa follows that up with where are we seeing you two in yes. person in the near future um so eric go okay real quickly <laughs> You'll see us at DAX in Illinois. This is two weeks away. So in the Chicagoland area, Tenley Park, we will both be at the DAX shows. Um, yep. I will be doing a half-day class that is finding your foundations, designing, digitizing your first design. And that is me giving you the basic foundations of all the things you need to know to start digitizing. It is not a hands-on live, we're digitizing together class. It is a all the foundations you need to know so you don't make mistakes as you start. Uh, the other short one I'm doing is about editing designs and it has some overlap. So if you're in the digitizing class, you might not want that one, but it's all about editing and getting your designs to look the best they can. And that's on the next day and that's only an hour long. Cool. Awesome. How about you, sir? Uh, let's see. My, I've got two classes. One is called Into Cyberspace. Uh, you know, we, I tried to get a little too creative with the uh, the title. <laughs> the, the breakdown of it, the basics of it here is how do you create content today? Meaning nice. how do we have that conversation with our customers in a digital world? Right. So many of us, the, our customers, we've never met face to face a lot of times, you know, if you're doing mm -hmm. e-commerce or anything like that. So how do you build a relationship with your customers? And that is through content creation. You know, I'm going to talk a lot about what I've done and what Eric's helped me do and with two regular guys. But I'm not there to say you need to do an hour long podcast every week. I'm there to say you need to do something where you're having that conversation with your mm -hmm customers with your potential customers. And so we're going to go through it all. We're going to talk about, um, you know, what we've done with two regular guys, kind of the format. I'm going to give you all the nuts and bolts. I'm bringing the studio. So this will be set up in the room. And at the very end, if you're brave enough, you can sit down and deliver your own elevator pitch based on what we've learned. So at the very beginning, I, I make it really scary and ter terrifying at the very beginning. And I ask everybody to stand up and tell us what it is that you do. Right. And then after that, we go through how do we change that story to make it more engaging in, into people. And now, some people nice. have had really great stories and you could tell that they practice and they've got their elevator pitch down. But we can always figure out ways to make it more engaging. So, yeah, we, we break through all that. I even have a segment at the end where we talk about overcoming our fears and how we do that, because a lot of it is about. Um, yeah, I've got to be on screen. I've got to get in front of a camera like this. That's really scary to me. Um, yet they do it all day long with their customers and it just happens to be their customers are behind a camera. So um, we talk about that and then I give them the opportunity to take away with them at the end of the class, a recorded elevator pitch that they can post on their website, on their social media channels, all that stuff. And uh, yeah, so the brave ones do it and uh, the other ones are still working up to it. So we just, we give them all the tools that they need to, to get to where they need to go. So it's a lot of fun. Um, and then the next day I completely shift gears and I talk about pricing strategy. So <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> go from something where there's a lot of, a lot of thought and a lot of like creativity involved to just nuts and bolts. <laughs> yeah. Right in the nuts and bolts. But we do get into some creativity talking about awesome. different things. And so it's Always. not, I'm not going to give you the multiply times three and that will uh, give you your, your value, right? We're going to actually talk about why that's a challenge. So the class is also actually called three pricing strategies to avoid and what to do instead. So, um, right on. yep. Yep. So there we go. That's what we got. And um, Dean says, you need to figure out how we're going to do this in volley. So I will figure that out. Dean. We'll have to figure it out. OSP.link <laughs> forward slash volley. 
So um, I think we've we've done it, Eric. I think we have. I mean, let me just ask you this because we have one more. Uh, thanks again to Todd for the softball at the end there, my friend. <laughs> <laughs>